First of all, have you thought about the title for this documentary? No, I haven't. Okay. I thought about the, a girl we could joke at the a calendar that is, but I thought that that's too obvious. I thought the second title might be much better. They ping up that stands out like a crown among chickens. So most people there, if you send in for, they pick up the keywords, ping up, that shows there. And then that's a little more poetic. A ping up stands out like a crown among chickens. Yeah. Have you heard that expression before? No. That, that's a t Chinese uh, expression, but used very well. I know the American people or Western world doesn't heard about it. It's very picturesque, a crown standing among a flock of chickens. That means outstanding. Here, I have here the, on the, say I give you video, audio, track one, track two. And video, you zoom in on the insert of the calendar that shows this. I'm going to give you a copy of the calendar. Okay. Anyway, that job was very demanding. I offered brought 10, 15 manuscript home and read, spread in bed and read there. And in between time, I took a cheese break in the coffee break or ping up break because I have the calendars by the wall uh, by my bedside. I, that will work for a while. And then I found it's boring to watch the same picture on the calendar for nearly a whole month. I thought, why can't somebody come up with a girl week instead of a little verse on the bottom? I said, why can't somebody come with a joke a day? Still, this, I, this in my mind for a few weeks or maybe over a couple of months. And then one evening, suddenly, something dawned on me, two poems. <laughs> When I made up a, a dummy, the calendar in 1962, I wrote out a letter to different, the, the biggest distributors, and one of them in New York for the cable news sent me a telegram, asking me to see them right away and bring a dummy sample. So I went them to see them. I made up in my kitchen table, used magazine pictures to show them where they, because 52 of them, and I used some jokes there. They like it, they like it right away. So they gave me a contract for three years and the order of 200,000 copies. At that time, I was a greenhorn. I never have done any business before. I was so happy somebody would take on a three year contract and order 200 copies. I signed the contract, no problem. I, when I walk out there, Headquarter in Fifth Avenue in New York, I jumped on the sidewalk, kicked my heels. I came back, was on the airplane, I was actually on cloud line. I saw this is bright, and this is great. So then I went to New York to look for the pictures. That was a real treat. I went through all the photo agencies, went through thousands and thousands of photos. 
the ladies of all types and sizes and shapes all over. And that time, I was not a photographer. I didn't have any photography training. I just go by my own instant taste, what I like, the composition, the color, or the things, what appears to me, I think it will appear to the other people. And funny thing is, when I finally selected all the pictures, they told me they are all first class, world class photographers. Ross Myers, Tom Kelly, you know, Tom Kelly who discovered my own Monroe. Oh, I said, that's fine. And then at the end of my uh, renting, I can't afford to buy all this. I only bought it one time use, rights for one time use. <laughs> But all over town in Chicago, I could not find one single printer to do the printing job for me. They said, go back, yell, yell at them, complaining. When the Playboy calendar has only 12 pictures, sell for 75 cents a piece, how can you make a calendar of 52 pictures about the same size as the Playboy, the full size color? to sell for a dollar. That would cost you about 60, 70 cents to make a copy. So nobody can do it. I said, I'm the type of man, I don't want to go back my work. I signed a contract with them. I said, if you allow me to come to look at your printing process, maybe I can think about some way to cut the corners. Or oh, they laugh at me. They think, you think you are Chinese. They think you, the Chinese invented printing. You think you're gonna reinvent printing? I said, no, 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 not the kind. Anyway, they laugh at me, they wouldn't agree. Anyway, I wouldn't give up. I just tried every printer in town. I finally found the one, man's, a big corporation. They said, okay, come take a look. There's no harm to us. So what can you come up with? So I visited man's at the Raven School every day for about two weeks. Finally, I came up with a solution. First of all, 52 pages. You don't have to use 50 sheets. You print on both sides. That's cut down to half of the, the paper. Secondly, the most expensive item I found out is color separation. In the early 60s, it's very expensive. And the, the pictures I got from the photographers, some of them 8 by 10, some of them 5 by 7, some of them 4 by 6, some of them 35, some of them two by two. If we unify this, borrow a technique from Henry Ford, use assembly line. I photograph, re-photograph all the, the, the pictures, all the, uh, the transparencies to 35, and then go through the whole thing. That drastically reduces the, the price. So that's the thing really did the trick. And matter of fact, because my technique, the company, Mans, made a lot of money out of his other jobs. And because of this, the word spread out that I'm some kind of genius. And one manager came to me and says, I have a picture for you to be used as your calendar cover. If you use this as your calendar cover, I guarantee you will sell out three printings, regardless how many printings you have. If not, these pictures are me, free. I said, all right, show me the picture. Guess what the picture is? It's a Jackie Kennedy look alike in the nude. That was the, <laughs> that was the, uh, at the end of 1963, when Jackie Kennedy conducted a tour of White House, she has the highest rating on TV. And the more magazines showed her picture than the president. And this picture, really very close to it. And the hairdo, the chin, everything, it's very close to it. I said, no, 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 that's not for me. I just bowed the eyes, <laughs> not for me. When I came back to Chicago, I told my partner as a joke, but he took it seriously. And I said, no, that's not the way I brought them. No, I can't do it. 
So we argued back and forth for a few days. Finally, we broke it up. I went to every bank, every available to me. I went to there, every bank, every loan company, every venture capitalist. If you have no collateral, they don't even want to ask you a second question. So I found out a way to produce it. Since the cable signed a contract with me that he would pay me 50 cents per copy when the things sold. From my money out of the cable, I signed a portion to my suppliers, to the paper people, to the printer. That's called assignment. They talk it. They all talk it, except the one, spiral binding. They're still around spiral binding. That was in August. They, they loaded the, the skates on an open truck. But on the highway, there's a slow storm. That spoiled a lot of po portion of the calendar. I have to reprint. That's why it was so late. Did not get on the newsstand until January. <laughs> But I sent out some complimentary copies, like one to the Groucho Marx. Oh, he liked it so much. He sent me a Christmas card with his own handwriting, saying after seeing it, I couldn't sleep the whole night. By the way, that puzzles me. Is it the jokes that made him couldn't sleep the whole night, or is it the pictures? If the pictures, whose picture that made that? The important thing I mentioned about the, the where sense of humor is universal, but jokes comes with different varieties, and most of them are too long. And only the American style of jokes, called the one-liners, is precise to the point. And my calendar can't fit in the long way. <laughs> we have to be very small has to be sentence or two to fit in that small column there. By the way, I, the jokes I wrote, I use a pen name as he, who, who, he. <laughs> and, uh, See here? Except the first one or so, Little bit standard like this. See how good they were used? Are you surprised that the calendars are in such good the condition? The condition, <laughs> look, mean condition. Exactly, mean condition. They never used. How good this in preserved this in there, thirty nine years. You can see the spiral here, not even rusted, 39 years.
instead of uh, going to chapter 7 or chapter 11, I told my creditors I had to find two jobs and pay them back. And uh, one of the jobs I found was a, a juggler at the, the printing plant. The juggler is different from the, the circles juggler. The juggler is you juggle the paper. I don't mind the job, I don't mind the manual work, except that some of these printings they did for the magazines, practically trash, they're showing everything. I call that the clinical, those pictures, it's nothing. I get so frustrated because mine, the real art, is in the boxes gathering dust, and their trash is sell like mad. So have you ever thought of contacting Playboy today to see if they can help no, you sell that? No, I don't, I don't quite uh, agree with their philosophy. What, I, I never uh, contact them. What, what is their philosophy you don't agree with? Uh, the way they treat women as an object. The way they treat it. The way I look at it as a beauty. If you ask any artist, the, the, the human form, especially the female form, is one of the uh, best uh, art forms. <laughs> early and then the next day I woke up I saw the singing I heard the birds singing that's where I got the idea of the calendar would repeat itself so I got up early go to the library and check and sure said the same because the Christian calendar only have so many patterns and they repeat not regularly irregularly and so my calendar would 1963 would repeat in 1974 in 1985, 1981, 2002. So when, when's the next date beyond 2002 that the calendar repeats? Uh, 2013, 2013. It's the first time the calendar repeats itself is in 1974 because the dates are the same in 1974, but that's kind of unusual. People wouldn't understand. So in order for the customers to understand the rarity of this calendar, I had to make a large red envelope to explain the situation to the customer. The red, you know, printing red, if you want to match Coca-Cola <laughs> red, it's very hard. It's almost like their secret formula. I had to go to different chemical lab to find a red that close to Coca-Cola's red. But the, the company who printed that couldn't deliver that on time. I lost the distribution contract. I sent the news release and uh, Chicago sometimes picked it up and uh, UPI picked it up. And because of the article in Chicago sometimes, people lined outside my place at Wellington for a block and a half to two blocks to buy the calendar. drove down to Roseland, I think Roseland, Indiana, Luda's camp. And the manager was very polite, first of all, after what he heard, after he saw this. And he said, you know what? You are paddling icebox to, to Eskimos. Paddling icebox to Eskimos. <laughs> I sent our news release, and this time 
Associated Press pick it up, interview me, and send the photographer to take my picture, and send my picture and the calendar through their wire, uh, Associated Press wire service, over two or probably 300 newspapers throughout the country published it. And our phone rang off the hook for days. Anyway, then the next time it would repeat is 1991. I think that's too close. I didn't do anything about it. So I wait until 2002. So in January 2001, we sent it to a company who has been business over two decades called the Hicks Americana and the Collectibles in Ohio. So they took the calendar and put on their catalog for auction with opening bids for $95. And they sold the calendar for $100. So we following suit, we auctioned online ourselves eBay, Amazon, Yahoo, and we sold between 100 and 110 for quite a few calendars. And then we realized that is for the collectors. After line 11, 01, most of the people, so this changed our life forever. The president said we should get back on our life. And the mayor of New York said it's okay to laugh. And we said the best way to laugh is use the Girl Week joke at their calendar. Because there's 365 jokes there. You have one joke a day to start your day with humor. That's why we're urging people to donate this calendar to our troops. Because I have more women customers than men. They bought this for their brothers or relatives or friends who were born in that year, 1963, or their relatives who lived through 60s and then remind them 60s. They are more open-minded than I thought. That's why I, I'm, I'm convinced that uh, if you have something good, people would realize it sooner or later. And now I, I think that's a good thing, that the kind of a character training. And uh, if anyone believes in something does not persist on it, I think that's better for the character. And I think that that's, that's good for me. And also keep me going, keep my mind thinking all the time.
I use a calculator to calculate this thing. From $100, uh, from $1 in 63 to $100 in 2001. What's the percentage? The calculator said the increase of the price in percentage is 9,900%. <laughs> 